In this video, we're going to talk about ionic compound nomenclature, specifically of the Zumdahl type 1. The Zumdahl type 1 is a nomenclature developed by a professor, Zumdahl, at the University of Illinois Champaign-Urbana. So the type 1 nomenclature proposed by Zumdahl follows the IUPAC guidelines. That's the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. These are the guys who set up all of our rules that we've been following. So, the hallmark of the Zumbal type 1 is that the cations only form one possible charge. So which cations are these? These are your silver, zinc, cadmium, aluminum, gallium, and indium, and your group 1 and group 2 metals. So first we're going to talk about binary. This is two elements forming the compound. So only a cation and an anion. No polyatomics necessary. So the rules. We name the cation first and the anion second. The cation is going to take the name of the metal, while the anion takes the non-metal root and adds IDE as a suffix. So let's take a look. So our first example is NaCl. Now, when you see these, the first thing you should ask is, is the metal in group 1, group 2, is it silver, zinc, cadmium, aluminum, gallium, or indium? If the answer is yes, you have a type 1 compound. And you name the cation first and the anion second. So we would name this, Na is sodium, and the Cl is chlorine. But remember, it gets the IDE suffix, so chlorine becomes chloride. What about CaO? What's Ca? calcium. Oxygen is O, so oxygen becomes oxide, so calcium oxide. Then we have MgF2. Mg is magnesium and F is fluorine, so fluorine becomes fluoride. Now remember, spelling does count. Fluoride is F-L-U-O-R-I-D-E, not F-L-O-U. Fluoride versus flouride. And then finally, what about Ag2S? This would be silver with sulfur, so this is silver sulfide. So if we want to go from name to formula, we need to know our ion charges. So remember, for your cations, the group 1A are plus 1, group 2A are plus 2, Silver is plus 1, zinc and cadmium are plus 2, aluminum, gallium, and indium are plus 3. As well as the group 7A tend to be a minus 1, group 6A tend to be a minus 2, and group 5A tend to be a minus 3. You need to know those charges in order to get the formulas correct. Alright, so let's do some example problems. First we have barium iodide. The first thing we need to do is determine what the charges on these ions are. If we look at the periodic table, we see that barium is in group 2, which means it's going to be a positive 2 ion. Iodine is in group 7, which means it's going to be a negative 1 ion. So once we get those guys written out, to find the formula, I'm going to make the superscript of one become the subscript of the other. So when I'm done here, I have BaI2. Next, we're going to do potassium sulfide. And we start similarly. We find that potassium is a positive 1 and the sulfide is a negative 2. So we're going to make the superscript of 1 become the subscript of the other. So that gives us K2S. Our next example, we have cadmium selenide. Cadmium is a plus 2 ion and selenide is a minus 2. So, when I make the superscript of one become the subscript of the other, I would end up with CD2SE2. But since it's a one-to-one -one ratio, and all ionic compounds have to have an empirical formula, we're going to turn that into CDSE. And our final example problem, we have calcium nitride. Calcium is a plus 2 ion, and nitride is a minus 3 ion. So I'm going to take 
the superscript of one and make it the subscript of the other. And we end with CA3N2. All right, so if we introduce polyatomic ions into our type 1 nomenclature, the rules are you name the cation first and the anion second. Now in this case, we just use our ion names. We don't have to add an IDE suffix. We just name whatever the anion is. So let's take a look at some examples. So first we have NaNO3. So Na is sodium, and the NO3 minus ion is the nitrate ion. So we just call it sodium nitrate. Pretty simple. In the second example, we have CaNO2 taken twice. That's how we say the parentheses and the number after. So parentheses would be taken and then the number after twice. So here we have calcium and the NO2 ion, in this case, is the nitrite ion. So this is calcium nitrite. And then finally we have NH4 taken twice CO3. Now, here we have the two polyatomics together. The ammonium ion, NH4+, plus, is treated as if it were a type 1 cation. So we just say the cation name, ammonium, and the anion. CO3 is carbonate, so this is ammonium carbonate. All right, to go from name to formula, we need to know our ion charges. This is why we need to know our polyatomic names, formulas, and the charges. So we're going to do a series of example problems. So here we go. Start this off. We have strontium sulfate. With strontium sulfate, we've got to find the strontium ion. That is SR, and that's a 2 plus ion. And then we have the sulfate, which is a 2 minus ion. Now since there's a plus 2 and a minus 2, when I put the two together, all I'm going to have is the SR, SO, Four, because the positive 2 and the minus 2 cancel each other out. Next we have aluminum carbonate. The aluminum ion is a plus 3 ion, and the carbonate has the formula CO3 with a 2 minus. So, when I have a 3 and a 2, if I were to just put them together 3 and 2, I'd still have an excess of positive charge. So we need to make sure we balance out our charges. So the superscript on the aluminum becomes a subscript on the carbonate and the superscript on the carbonate becomes a subscript on the aluminum. So then when we write out the formula we have Al2CO3 but we need to put it in parentheses with a 3. Al2CO3 taken three times. Next up we have zinc dihydrogen phosphate. So the zinc ion is a plus 2 ion, and dihydrogen phosphate is H2PO4 with a 1 minus charge. So since the zinc is a positive 2 and the dihydrogen phosphate is a negative 1, I need two dihydrogen phosphates in order to have my charges balance. So when I write my formula, I should have zinc with HPO4 taken two times because I need those two H2PO4 ions in order to balance out the zinc charge. And finally we have ammonium sulfide. In this case the ammonium is our polyatomic ion and the sulfide is a simple monatomic ion. So the ammonium ion is NH4 plus and the sulfide ion is an S should be a 2 minus there but Somehow I missed that one. So we'll go ahead and change that to a minus, two minus. There we go. So now, since there, this ammonium is a plus one and the sulfur has a minus two charge, I need two ammoniums for the sulfur charge. So I would write NH4, and since I need two of them, I'm going to put parentheses around two and an S. NH4 taken twice. S. So as a final remark, in order to get good at nomenclature, going formula to name and name to formula, this requires a lot of practice. 
any time you run across a chemical compound, determine its name. Any time you run across the formula, determine its name. Any time you run across the name, determine the formula. There are a lot of practice problems in the book, and there are several practice problems on Eagle. I urge you to do as many as possible.